Good morning students. We are learning water resource engineering and hydrology. Our topic of discussion that is hydrological parameters. In today's lecture we will discuss one more process of hydrological cycle that is the transpiration. Okay. Well, before starting the lecture first we should learn that what is transpiration? How we can define how this process works so the transpiration transpiration is the process by which plants dissipate water from the surface of their leaves also their stalks and trunks in the process of their growth so that means whenever precipitation occurs some amount of water will drain off that we consider as a runoff okay some amount of water that stays on the leaves or on the trees okay so that amount of water when it get evaporate okay that is known as the transpiration okay now as much as 99 percent of the total water that received by a plant through its roots is lost to the atmosphere by this particular process that is transpiration. Well, transpiration mainly occurs when the plant manufactures carbohydrates for its growth with the process of photosynthesis. Okay. Now, what actually happens that the water that extracted by the plant roots from the soil mass, okay, that transfer to the plant leaves. So, in the photosynthesis process, air enters the stomata openings in the leaf surface, okay, and the chloroplasts within the leaf that utilize carbon dioxide from the air along with a very small amount of moisture to the manufacture carbohydrates. As air enters the leaf, the water escapes through the stomata. If we talk about transpira uh, transpiration ratio, that is the weight of water transpired to the weight of dry matter produced. So, this transpiration ratio for most of the crops that rise from 300 to 800. Well, talking about some drawback of the transpiration, okay, transpiration results in water scarcity that can damage the plants due to the desiccation. It also causes wilting of the leaves and it results in stunt growth of the plants. Well, talking about the significance of the transpiration, Transpiration helps in the conduction of water and minerals to the different parts of the plants. Also, due to the continuous elimination of the water from the plant body, there is a balance of water that maintained within the plant. Also, transpiration maintains osmosis and it keeps the cells rigid. A suction force is created by the transpiration and this force helps in the upward movement of the water in the plants. Certain hydrophilic salts are accumulated on the surface of the leaves which keeps the leaves in the moist condition. It also maintains the turgidity of the cells and helps in cell divisions. Also, optimum transpiration helps in the proper growth of the plants. The cooling effect of a tree that is due to the evaporation of water from its leaves and this evaporation of water from the leaves, it itself 
known as the transpiration. So these all are the significance of the transpiration. Now let's discuss about some factors that affect this transpiration process. Well, as we have discussed that the evaporation and the transpiration are almost the equal process. Just transpiration uh, is that the amount of water that evaporate from the leaf that is known as the transpiration. Okay, so all that factors that affect the evaporation from the free water surface, okay, that all the factors affect transpiration also. So let's discuss that the first factor that is the temperature of air. Well, transpiration increases with increase in the air temperature. Okay, as the temperature increases, there is an increase in aqueous vapor pressure that is of the leaves, and then the transpiration automatically increases. Okay, because of with the high temperature evaporation will be high and that evaporation is from the leaves. So, at this relation, transpiration will definitely increase. So, thus in the summer season or the in the hot countries, the transpiration will be more as compared to the winter or the cold countries. The next factor that is the wind velocity in air, the water lost due to the transpiration can accumulate in the form of vapor to the leaf surface. Now, this will reduce the rate of water loss as the water potential gradient from inside to the outside of the leaves is slightly less. The wind blows away much of this water vapor near the leaf surface. Now, making the potential gradient steeper and speeding up the diffusion of water molecules into the surrounding air. Well, even in the wind, there may be some accumulation of water vapor in a thin boundary layer of slower moving air next to the leaf surface. The stronger the weed, the thinner this layer will tend and the steeper the water potential gradient. Well, the third is atmospheric pressure. The reduction of the atmospheric pressure reduces the density of the external atmosphere. This allows more rapid diffusion of water. Thus, a decrease in the atmospheric pressure increases the rate of transpiration. The plants growing on hills show the higher rate of transpiration because of low atmospheric pressure and thus they develop xerophytes characters. At high altitudes, the rate of transpiration is more because of the atmospheric pressure. Now the fourth one that is the humidity. The humidity of the atmosphere affects the rate of diffusion of water vapor from the stomata. Now low humidity in the atmosphere increase the rate of transpiration. On the other hand, high humidity in the air that reduce the rate of outward diffusion of water from the substomatal cavities. And also it reduce the rate of transpiration because the air is already laden with the water vapor. The fifth factor that is the solar radiation well transpiration occurs during the photosynthesis which usually occurs during the sunlight and hence most of the transpiration will occur during the daylight hours about the 95 percent of the total transpiration occurs in the daylight the transpiration increases as the solar radiation increases it is almost equal to the temperature of the air okay so Transpiration can be decreased by reducing the solar radiation that is only and only possible in the evening session or at the night. Or as we can provide the shades to uh, on the trees or the leaves that can also uh, somewhere decrease the solar radiation. And in such cases we can decrease the transpiration. Well, the sixth one 
that is the soil moisture well transpiration also depends upon the soil moisture content the water content of the soil after the gravitational water has drained out and this is called as a field capacity the water in the soil between the field capacity and wilting coefficient is available for the transpiration well, if the water available is less than the wilting point then the plants may not be able to suck up the water from the soil mass and that means the rate of transpiration decreases as the soil water content decreases so the next is the physiological factors well transpiration depends upon the physiological factors of the plant such as the density the characteristics of the stomata extent and the character of protective coating and the leaf structures the stomata contains numerous pores water that escapes through stomata as the air enters and it results in the transpiration the stomata open with the day and close with the darkness now when stomata are fully open the transpiration would be the maximum okay so this is about the physiological factor now next we will discuss about the measurement of transpiration so measurement of transpiration can be done by photometer method okay in order to measure the transpiration we have various methods but generally we use photometer method talking about this method well this is the most important and the widely used method the photometer consists of a closed and watertight tank containing sufficient earth to nourish the plant it is sealed so as to prevent the seal any automatic inflow or the outflow of the water so that the actual water can remain or can be examined now water is applied only artificially till the plant growth is completed okay the instrument is then weighted in the beginning as well as at the end of the experiment so that we can calculate the amount of water that were present and at the end of the practical or at the end of the test how much amount of water is present now the water required during the growth is measured and the loss due to the transpiration can be calculated by an equation that is the t is equals to w1 plus w minus w2 wherein t is nothing but the total loss due to the transpiration okay now w1 is the initial weight of the instrument with that amount of water capital w is the total weight of water that is applied during full growth of the plant and the w2 is the final weight of the instrument okay so with this equation we can calculate the total loss due to the transpiration the transpiration loss that can calculated as this equation is not actual value of the field but is the only value that is examined or that is calculated in the laboratories with the practicals okay so the values obtained by the above test that we have uh, discussed here that is the photometer okay must be multiplied by a suitable factor that to obtain the possible field results because this test is done with a closed instrument while in the actual scenario the plants and the trees are in the open atmosphere okay so we have to consider all other factors too so this was about today's lecture thank you so much students for your kind attention we will see you in the next lecture thank you